So you're eating out with your buddies and good friends. You got some sushi to the left and fried chicken to the right. Seems like the fun won't never, ever, ever end. But later on that night, you bring the party to your place. All of a sudden, the pain stirs in your belly. And next thing you know, you're throwing up all over the place. Yeah, you got the blues. You got the enterotoxin blues. Yes, said you got, you got the blues, my friend. You got those gram positive blues. If you're rushing to the bathroom, you got that food poison blues. The disease discussed in this video is staphylococcal food poisoning. It's primarily caused by the bacteria S. aureus. This bacteria is gram-positive, and it occurs singly, in pairs, and in irregular clusters. The bacteria's natural habitat are the human nasal passages. From there, it contaminates the hands, and the bacteria enters the food during food preparation. If the food is left in room temperature, a situation named temperature abuse, the bacteria multiply and release enterotoxin in the food. S. Aureus produces many toxins, but the toxin that is a primary cause of food poisoning is serological type A. This tastes weird. Once the toxin is released, it is difficult to destroy by heat. Even after 30 minutes of boiling, the toxin can still live. Once the toxin is in the human system, symptoms include vomiting, <laughs> abdominal cramps, which can then lead to diarrhea. One disease that has some common symptoms to food poisoning is salmonellosis. Some common symptoms are abdominal cramps which can also lead to diarrhea. But the main difference is with this disease is that the source is from animal intestinal tracts and eggs and unlike food poisoning salmonellosis does not release uh, a toxin. Another disease is cholera. It also has vomiting, abdominal cramps, and diarrhea as symptoms. But the main difference is its high mortality rate that mostly occurred in the past. And cholera has much more fluid loss. Another disease with similar symptoms as food poisoning is Yersinia gastroenteritis. Some common symptoms are abdominal cramps and diarrhea, but the main differences are also the source, which are from animal intestinal tracts, and this microbe can grow in refrigerator temperatures. If the bacteria are not killed, the pathogen can be recovered. Once grown in a lab, S. aureus can be tested by phage typing. 
a method used in tracing the source of the contamination. Detecting the toxin it releases in food samples is difficult because it only takes a small amount to infect a person. There may be as little as only 1 to 2 nanograms of toxin in 100 grams of food. The researcher Dak and his colleagues proved that staphylogical food poisoning was caused by a toxin from S. aureus. They did this by isolating a culture of S. aureus from a cream-filled sponge cake. Then they inoculated the volunteers and they immediately showed symptoms of staphylogical food poisoning. Directly quoted from Todar's online textbook of microbiology, he states, taxonomically, the genus Staphylococcus is from the bacterial family Staphylococcae, which includes three lesser known genera, Gamela, Macrococcus, and Salinococcus. The best known of its nearby phylogenetic relatives are the members of Bacillus. Because recovery usually only takes 24 hours, the best regimen of the cure is to have plenty of bed rest during the symptoms. The death rate of this disease is extremely low. There have only been a few mortalities and it's only occurred in weakened individuals. The best way to prevent food poisoning is to refrigerate food right away before the bacteria has time to produce the toxin. The actors in this video is starring me, Alexis, and Daylight Shaken! Dreamet Dad! Woo! Thank you, good night, good night, everybody. Goodbye.